Good morning. I call this meeting to order. I want to thank everyone for attending on short notice. Today we will organize the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs for the 117th Congress. But before we begin, uh, I want to take a moment to lay out uh, how I hope we can conduct committee business in the middle of this pandemic. Uh, and this is no judgment, um, and this is not a scold, but I'm just hoping we can do that, do the following in this committee. Uh, we all want to continue to do our part to stop the spread of COVID-19 and set an example for the public. That means following public health guidelines from the CDC and the attending physician. So I intend to keep my mask on while speaking during committee business, and I encourage my colleagues to do the, to the same. Again, no judgment, um, but I think we want to move on from the um, context in which wearing a mask is a polarized question. Uh, now to the business at hand. In order to proceed under our committee rule 5, B, and C, any business meeting and resolution that is scheduled uh, fewer than 48 hours must be agreed to by the vice chairman. Senator Murkowski, do you agree to waive this rule for the purpose of organizing? I do. Thank you. Uh, we will begin by selecting the chair and vice chair and then adopting the committee rules uh, and funding resolutions for the 117th Congress. But first, I want to welcome our members, particularly our newest members on the committee, Senator Ben Ray Lujan uh, of New Mexico and Senator Mike Rounds of South Dakota. This committee is unlike any other on a bipartisan basis throughout its history. It has always committed itself to the solidarity of native people in Indian country, in Alaska, and in Hawaii. Through languages, cultures, and knowledge systems, native communities across the country have contributed in so many ways to our shared American history. Today, our federal trust responsibility to American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiians remains true and should be our guiding light. I'm also proud to serve in leadership alongside my good friend, and that phrase is overused in the United States Senate, um, but it is, uh, it is the truth as it relates to my relationship with uh, my good friend, Lisa Murkowski. Um, the Hawaii and Alaska delegations enjoy a rich history of friendship to achieve shared priorities for our unique states. The non-contiguous states caucus uh, remains strong, and I'm pleased to continue this tradition of collaboration on this committee. As chairman, I'm determined to work with all of you, not only in ad uh, advocating uh, native priorities in this committee, but also on building bipartisan momentum throughout the Senate to get things done for Native communities. I look forward to a productive 117th Congress. I will now turn to the Vice Chairman for any opening statements that she may have. Senator Murkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations to you. Um, uh, I'm gonna start this initial uh, hearing as, my, as the Vice Chairman in offering an apology for my tardy arrival. You would think that after 18 years in the Senate, I would know that I can't get through the door on the sixth floor down here. And so um, I apologize, but I've got my roadmap better. Thank you, for, um, thank you for recognizing the new members to our committee, uh, Senator Lujan and Senator Rounds. Uh, I hope you will find, as I have after the many years that I have been privileged to serve on this committee, that this is one where um, we've, got some, we've got some issues, we've got some challenges that we deal with that can be very, very frustrating, but there is truly a shared purpose and common goals as we try to do uh, better by our, our, our Native Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Alaska, uh, uh, Alaska Indians. Alaska Natives, boy, I said that all wrong. <laughs> um, I got frazzled in that hallway on the sixth floor and couldn't get through the door. Um, Ms. Chairman, you, you note the, uh, the friendship, the partnership that Alaska and Hawaii have had over the years. It was some, somewhat legendary back in the day, the relationship that uh, Ted Stevens from Alaska and Senator Daniel Inouye uh, had um, from Hawaii working together on, on issues that um, really developed a bond and a, a common shared purpose. Um, I think it's fair to say that the things that brought them together decades ago uh, still present themselves as issues and challenges, things that you and I can certainly work on. Um, I think the non-contiguous caucus is, is going to be recognized as small but mighty, and we will, uh, we will be working together to, to build on the partnerships and the relationships. And it, 
it makes it much easier when we do have that, that friendly and, and good personal relationship as member to member. But as I look around the committee, I think we've got that with, uh, with so many of our colleagues here. And I think, again, that comes when you're trying to do right, when you're trying to do good for the people that you serve. And for so many of us in our states and in our, in our regions, our Native people have been left behind. Left behind in the sense of, of resources that are allocated to, to annual budgets, whether it's everything from education to health care to public safety to just basic infrastructure needs. So there's so much work that we have to do together. I was, uh, I was vice chairman of this committee once before. It was back in 2007, 2008. I served with uh, 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 then former uh, chairman, Byron Dorgan. Um, it was a great opportunity for us to focus on Native youth suicide. We did that here in the committee. And then when Senator Dorgan retired, he went on to continue that very aggressively out in the private sector. And it's something that I continue to work with him on. And I look forward, again, as we are working as, as, as members for shared purposes here, whether it's the initiatives that Senator Cantwell, you and I have worked on, uh, along with Senator Cortez Masto, in uh, and the issue of murdered, missing Indigenous women. Um, this is a, a priority that I think we would all like to be able to advance. And we did that certainly under the leadership of Chairman Hoven, working with Senator Tester. So many of us that have come together to, to really work to uh, address the continued challenges. I will end my comments by just noting this is a B committee. People kind of get their B committees after they've really picked the other things that they want to be on. I've been on this committee every year since I came to the Senate. For me, it's a priority. And I look at, at those of you who have also dedicated years. It's a priority to you as well. And so I think sometimes this, this small but mighty committee is a little bit overlooked. Um, Perhaps it's because when we move initiatives through the committee, they generally are bipartisan by the time they move out. So there's no fireworks, there's no big controversy, we just make things happen. That's a good way to run things, I might suggest, to just make things happen. But I think it's also time that we as members of this committee um, use this to really shine a light on, on some of the inequity, some of the inequality that we have seen um, that our first peoples around this great nation have been um, living with for generations. So we got a lot of work to do, but it's good work, it's shared work, and I appreciate uh, the partnership. With that, Mr. Chairman, I thank you, and I look forward to getting to work. Thank you very much. Uh Madam Vice Chair, uh, this is going to be a, a constructive Congress on behalf of uh, all of our Native peoples. Uh, are there any members uh, wishing to make an opening statement? Well, Senator Cantwell. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to congratulate you on uh, taking this gavel and the Vice Chair in her role and responsibility. Uh, I can't help but think of both uh, Senator Inouye and Senator Akaka's leadership on this committee resolving many issues for many of us on the committee, which uh, we know when it comes to Indian country, it's, it's thorny, it's complex, it's, you know, the, the uh, realm of legal issues in addition to just getting people to understand from our colleague perspective exactly these issues. I think of the senator from Montana and many of the issues he's fought for and had recognition. So we appreciate that uh, Hawaii is stepping up again to help all of us in Indian country, and we look forward to your skilled leadership uh, on these issues and certainly working with the, the vice chair. Um, I just want to say that uh, with this current COVID package, we really do need to, um, as Senator Murkowski knows, we had to fight once before in the last big economic downturn where people 
fought to protect Medicaid and Medicaid recipients, but then left out Indian country only because she and other people fought to, all of us fought to get them recognized Do we correct that inequity. Now, I believe that they have been one of the most impacted populations have you have you've said, Mr. Chairman, and we need to make sure, not just in this committee, but in the finance committee, that they receive the health care benefits that our trust responsibilities basically require us to do. So with that, I will, again, congratulations on taking the gavel and would look forward to your leadership on behalf of Indian country. Senator Tester. Yeah, I do want to echo the, your congratulations to you, Brian, and uh, to the vice chairwoman. Um, uh, it's going to be good to have you in this position. I know your commitment to Indian country. Uh, I remember uh, when Craig Thomas died, you took over the helm. Uh, uh, and, and quite frankly, what a great job that you did working with Dorgan. And I would commend this whole committee because when, when I first got on it, and I've been on it since I've been here too, this was a lightly attended committee. It was very lightly attended. And that's changed over the years. And I think that's good. I think that's really good. And so uh, the fact that we have for a business meeting uh, damn near everybody here is pretty amazing <laughs> compared to the old days. But thank you, guys. Senator Hogan. Yeah, thanks, Chairman Schatz. Again, congratulations to you and to Vice Chairman Murkowski. And uh, I would just echo some of the same comments in that I think this committee has really worked well in a bipartisan way. We, you know, we've moved a lot of bills. And so, you know, we want to be able to continue to do that. And I kind of compare it to our Ag Committee, which generally is you know, pretty bipartisan too. It's almost more geographic in how we do things than it is Republican, Democrat. But I, I would have to say, uh, I do think this committee really does work in a bipartisan way, and I think that's its great strength. And so, uh, and I know obviously our chairman and vice chairman are, uh, will certainly continue that and do a good job of it. So I, I look forward to the work. Thank you. If there are no further comments, uh, the first order of business is the election of chair and vice chair, even though the Senate has already approved Senate resolutions 28 and 32, and each party has selected its leadership, the bipartisan nature of this committee has customarily called for a committee vote. As this committee well knows, there is no ranking member here, but a true partnership between chair and vice chair. So is there a nomination to, uh, for chairman? Thank you. Thank you. That's, that felt somewhat awkward, but the record will reflect that Maria Cantwell nominated me to be chairman. Mr. Chairman, she wanted it repeated because apparently I didn't have my microphone on. I nominate the great gentleman from the great state of Hawaii to be the chairman of this very important committee, Brian Schatz. That was much better. Thank you. Second? that not fine nomination from Senator Cantwell. Uh, we will forego discussion. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed say no. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do, I, do we have a motion uh, to nominate the vice chairman? I would like to nominate the great senator from the great state of Alaska, Lisa Murkowski, as the vice chairman of the Indian Affairs Committee. I'll second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, our next order of business is to adopt the committee rules. The committee is required at the beginning of each Congress to adopt the rules to govern its operation. A copy of the proposed rules has been provided to members containing technical corrections and three substantive changes from the rules in the 116th Congress. No member of the committee has offered any amendments to the proposed rules. Is there a motion to adopt the rules? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Thank you. Our next item of business is the adoption of the committee funding resolution. This resolution is based on the allocation provided by the Senate Rules and Administration Committee. It authorizes expenditure, expenditures from the March uh, 1st, 2021 uh, through February 28th, 2023. A copy has been provided to each member of the committee. I will note, and we should thank uh, Senators Klobuchar and Blunt and the members of the Rules Committee. This is a pretty significant increase uh, for the staffing and operations of the committee. Uh, is there a motion to adopt the funding resolution? Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. The funding resolution is agreed to. For a final order of business, I'd like to waive subsection 12 
of Rule 26 of the Standing Rules of the Senate as we did last Congress and in previous Congresses it is necessary to dispense with subsection 12 of Rule 26 of the Standing Rules of the Senate to expedite the business of the Senate so staff can expeditiously process committee reports that accompany bills heading to the floor. Is there any objection? Hearing no objection, subsection 12 of Rule 26 is waived. There being no further business before the committee, the organizing hearing is adjourned.